If you're thinking about moving to Montana, or anywhere for that matter, and you have to sell your house wherever you're at first, you better have your ducks in a row. In this video, I'm going to show you all the things that can go wrong, and then I'm going to give you some tips so you can avoid a disaster. So like I said earlier, we're going to assume that you have to sell the house that you're currently in before you can buy a new house up here in Montana or wherever. The first thing I tell people that it's best if you have your house already listed and under contract before you make an offer up here. The reason I say that is if you're a seller and you, you're looking at an offer from, from you or from another person that doesn't have a house to sell and yours may even be a little bit higher and your house isn't even on the market yet, that's just not a good offer. They're gonna, you know, they don't know the market where you're coming from. I will call the agent and find out in those cases, but you know, nobody, nobody knows how quickly the house is gonna sell. And so that's kind of a big gamble for a seller here to tie up their house and wait for yours to even be listed first. So if you can already list it and have an offer on it, that helps out immensely. So once we get past that, let's just assume they accept your offer. The first thing you're gonna do is, on your offer, you're gonna pick a closing date, and more than likely, it's gonna coordinate with your house closing wherever you're coming from. And usually, you're gonna try and make it three to five days later, so there's time for the bank to get the money up to this bank, uh, and, and make sure this house goes through and you have enough funds to, to make it close. So now we'll get into the due diligence part of the deal. And just remember, this is times two because all of these same things I'm about to go over are happening on your deal as well. So I'm trying to show you there's a lot of dominoes that are being set up along the way that everything has to go perfectly for this to work out. The first and the biggest hurdle is the home inspection. And once again, this is happening on both sides. So if we look at our contract here, you'll notice that there are tons of, tons of things in the home inspection that come into play and things that can cause delays or kill the deal altogether. You have the inspection of the roof, the electrical, the plumbing. Uh, if there's a well, you're looking at that. You're looking at the property pins. You're looking at mineral rights. Uh, asbestos, if there's anything like that, if they find mold. As you can see, there's just tons of things that can be found in a house, in either house, that can cause a problem. And once you get to that point, if you do find a problem, you're gonna want those things fixed, so you'll put in an inspection notice, and you'll give the seller two options, or there's three options the seller has at that point. Either he can fix everything you want fixed, he can give you a credit for an amount of money that you guys agree upon that will fix things once you get in there, or the seller also has the right to say no. So all of these things can either kill the deal or add more time to it. So now we're in the closing dates and money changing hands and all the deals, and this is the major hang up for 90% of deals when you're trying to time everything. So here's a look at our inspection notice and as you can see there's just an area for writing down everything you want done. But like I said, the worst case scenario is the seller can say no and you walk away and you have to start all over again which then knocks over all the dominoes at your first house. The next thing we have in our contract is the financing contingency and obviously if the bank's not gonna give you a loan, you're gonna to have to back out of the deal. And I've seen a lot of times, well I shouldn't say a lot of times, but I've seen it enough where people, when they're buying a house, they don't realize that they're already approved for the loan to begin the whole process, but then in between the contract going into effect and closing, they decide, oh, I'm, I'm gonna buy a new truck to use to <laughs> work in my new house or whatever whatever it may be, but if they buy, if you make a large purchase in there, it may throw off all the numbers, and I've seen it happen where all of a sudden now you can't afford the house because you just screwed up your credit in the middle of the deal. So 
if this is something you're thinking about, I would wait uh, until after your house closes before you make any large purchases because it can affect everything. So the next thing that's going to come through during this process is the title contingency. You're going to receive a title report from the title company showing any easements or any kind of liens that are recorded against the property. And once again, if you find out there's a road easement going through there or some mineral rights, uh, something like that that you don't like, once again, uh, you're not going to know this when you first put in your offer and it also gives you a chance to back out if it's something you really don't like or you really don't want to have to deal with. Uh, so it protects both sides. And when I say all these things, all these contingencies, it just means it's protecting your earnest money. So if you do back out of the deal, you get your earnest money back, but you don't stop the other dominoes from falling on your first house. Another thing, an unfortunate thing that can pop up on title contingencies, even though the sellers are supposed to disclose all this before they list the house, but I've had a, uh, my wife had a deal where she was listing a house and they didn't say there was any issues with it. And they got an offer and it started going through and the title company did their search. And it turns out he had all kinds of tax liens against the house and the house wasn't worth as much as the, the liens he had on him. So he wasn't able to sell it. It ended up going back to the bank because uh, he, he owed more in tax liens than the house was worth. So the people that were going through the process of trying to buy it were obviously irritated with this because they had already paid for an inspection and an appraisal and you know then the deal didn't go through not by any fault of theirs but anyway the reason I tell you this is just it's one more thing that has to work out perfectly in order for this to be smooth and the last thing is the insurance contingency and most people don't think about this much but here in Montana if you're buying a place way out in the woods uh, up on the mountain somewhere the thing that comes into play that I've seen recently now is they're really cracking down on fire insurance and how much they'll give you or if they'll give you insurance at all it depends on how far you are from the fire department uh, it depends how hard it is to get to your property if you're near a main road there's a million things that go into it but with that being said if you can't get insurance and then the the bank requires insurance for the mortgage uh, that that can kill a deal as well also if you're in an area like this and right next to a stream or a creek or a river you may be in the in the flood plain and once again you can probably get insurance but it may be so expensive that you're not going to be able to afford it on top of your house payment which once again can blow up the deal so i don't mean to scare you off with all of this I just want to put it out there that there's a million things that come into play and when you're trying to do two deals simultaneously it's <laughs> there's a lot of things that can knock over the stack of dominoes so let's head up the mountain and i'll talk about some tips and things you can do to avoid all of this So the last thing you want to have happen is the house that you're currently in to close, meaning you're totally moved out, everything's in a truck or in storage, and then the house you're trying to move into up here is delayed for one of the many reasons I just went over. So what can you do to avoid that? Well, the first and easiest thing to do is to line up a rental, whether it's short term or a few months, and that will give you time to look around up here and find exactly what you're looking for and not be under the gun or the pressure that you're under to move out of the house you're currently in and to have a place up here. It means moving twice, but at least you won't be under the extreme pressure of trying to get everything timed out and maybe having to take a cut or lose some leverage on the house you're trying to get into up here. Also, if you're already out of the house down there and it's already closed then your offer up here isn't going to be contingent on your house selling which makes it a strong offer 
Another thing you can look into is called a bridge loan. And I have a lender you can talk to about this, but a, what a bridge loan does is it goes off the equity of your house that you're currently in, or it takes that equity and gives you a short-term loan so you can go ahead and purchase the house up here and not be, again, in a bind, not have the money if that one doesn't close right away to, to get the one up here if you find your dream property. So a bridge loan is a great option if you can qualify for that and if you can make that work, that's probably the best option to make it go smoothly and not have any worries about uh, your financing falling apart because your house where you're at didn't close when it was supposed to. And the last thing, if you can qualify for it, is just to get a regular mortgage. Obviously, that'll mean you're making two payments for a month or two, or hopefully not that long if it all works out. But again, it will, it will give you the advantage of making an offer on your house up here without it being contingent on your other house selling. And like I said, we're still in a strong market up here. We're still getting multiple offers on places. So if there's any way or anything you can do to make your offer better, you should definitely do it. And having, having the offer not contingent on another house selling is one, uh, is one way to make your offer a lot better. So if you'd like any information on a lender up here or have questions about anything we went over, I'd be happy to answer anything. You can contact me at the information at the end of the video. And thanks for watching. Thank you for watching our video. Please call, text, or email for more information. And don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana.